say, an uprising that can lead to revolution. And then in a fraction of time, the whole system collapses. It must be a fragile system if it were made. efficiency filter and heat exchange system. Perspiration passes through the first layer and is gathered in the second, where salt is separated. Breathing and walking provide the pumping action. to all the Trevenium in the planet. Mars will go into global meltdown. That's why the aliens never turned it on. Wholeness and balance vibrations to everyone, and thank you for tuning in to yet another amazing episode of AstroQuest. Obviously, it's been quite a morning, and there's a massive shipment that just came in. And I just, I got to check sound first because, you know, there's been all sorts of little things going on this morning, um, which is just standard in, in production. And I just want to make sure that we're coming through clear before we take this thing off. So just give me a moment and then I'm going to come right forward and we're going to get right into today's message. Okay, so everyone says loud and clear, so I'm going to go with that. And I'll tell you, some people, again, are looking for these abilities to throw lightning from the hands and all this kind of stuff. But sometimes the biggest ability that you can have is grounding the energy that one is capable of, of um, harnessing or getting into their body. And the interesting thing is I was thinking about this the other day because I was taking a look at electricity because obviously everyone has a wall socket right next to them. And there's a lot of energy coming out of that wall socket. But if we try to plug the fingers into it, we're just going to get electrocuted. And because energy is energy, it kind of says in a certain tense that because we only can handle so much in this governor, because everything about when the system peaks and then it can't really function, that's somewhat of governing, okay? And so our minds can think and our spirits can think, I want to fly. But then the body is the only one that's like, ah, I can't fly, but, you know, I can live through you. So this is like a deep metaphor, and again, to the energy. So there could be these massive energies, and then you're trying to approach it maybe with your body, and then this energy is far beyond what the body is capable of holding. And so you have these other vehicles in that are capable of holding a certain level of your abilities, power, senses, etc., in addition, what I'll also be doing is I'll be copying today's uh, images and things over um, to YouTube and some other places so you can get those images. And what I'll also be doing is my trans I'll put my transcript somewhere 
uh, so that people can have a, a good shorthand of how even I could start to put something like today's show together. And um, we've had this reputation, <laughs> and it's really about bringing newness all the time. And this is because Limitless has no limits, so there always should be something new and more expansive to learn. And each show we manage in doing, even when I look back out, I'm like, man, those are great shows. But I really want people to understand that these shows are not being done by yours truly personally. It is done by the collective frequency that we're all on because we have the same idea and, and biorhythm, connection, etc. with what we want to do with this reality, how we want to expand and expand ourselves, how we want to go into balance, those kind of things. So this is a collective frequency. So if anyone caught that post on Facebook when I post this particular image, um, which the main title is Fusion. You see me putting underneath calling all generators, capacitors, voltage regulators, and, and that's on the physical tense, on the spiritual tense, calling all time lords, all um, people who understand how to get messages like this across customs, meaning that the customs that everyone sets up in their mind are, is what determines, as we call it, the grid. It, what, it determines what they perceive. Even a, a person's advent into spiritual awakening or their path determines how they interpret all the things that they see while they're on that path. And what we're working on doing is having a full spectrum path. We have a passion for transparency, if you may. And this passion in itself actually keeps us in a stage of persisting tr persistently pursuing truth no matter what we may find. But that kind of gets me to today's disclaimer, which is uh, about how when we're going into these three-dimensional realities and we're discovering what goes on in these dualistic worlds and these physical worlds, why would we ever get all bent out of shape and judgmental right or left if we find out there was some type of conflict or some type of confusion or confliction that even involved our ancestors, our races, et cetera, because after all, they were going through the same thing that we were going through because 3D is 3D, meaning that dualistic planes are dualistic planes. So I'm going to show you how the two connects to three at some point today. But what I also want to talk about is I want to talk about, are you in the palace? external palaces, external kingdoms, and, and et cetera. Like, are you going and, and going through the gate or late, sleeping in one of those rooms, those five, 600 bedroom houses? Are you in one of those? So who I'm going to be discussing today is in, to you some direct person that has been looking out for you and been and calling you and seeing if you're okay? In 99% of the cases of the people who are listening to this, the answer is no. That they make up a group that is the collective frequency known as the masses. So if you hear something today about your race, your color, your creed, your culture, your petri dish, do me a favor and ask yourself, is it really yours? <laughs> or same thing as if, like, let's say for instance, somebody talk about Barack Obama. Someone may think that that's just a direct blow at black people. Same thing on the opposite side. Someone take, talk about the Queen of England. Some people think that's a blow at the British. But the reality really is, is that what has been created is these titles and who holds these titles, who decide and choose what these titles, as long as you take them, what they, how they function and what they do, is those who created the titles, the languages, the, po the poems, the poets, okay? So to me, that has to be very clear and it's a very, very deep disclaimer because some people may get on the side of protecting and say, oh, that's my people. We are all the same people. The only way we're going to get to the next space beyond, which I'm going to explain exactly where that's located today, is for us to realize how to collapse this prism or prison. Okay? So there's a prison break going on. Like a lot of people are not aware, but they are pinned down, literally, mentally, spiritually, and physically because of methods that have been used on this planet a knowledge that was on, that's on this planet, and the person has become uh, or fallen victim to it. And so it should be very clear that this planet is billions of years old, and we're over here still trying to figure out if we had a past life or not. So there are beings who all of those years, maybe chunks of them, three, 4,000 years versus your little 20, 30 years per se, have been collecting that knowledge just like you're collecting that knowledge right now. But because it does sum itself all up, the sum, okay, 
because it sums itself all up at a certain point, once you get a certain level of knowledge, then you become basically a master in the game, okay? Now, this is very important for people to realize because they could find themselves in a game as a novice with masters that are using certain types of knowledge, symbols, systems that we are still attempting to feebly discover and also sometimes accepting or making ourselves accept that this not even going on, it doesn't exist. Okay, what I also want everyone to realize is, is that the program that I'm going to discuss today it is, has been running in multiple cultures during different periods of time, okay? So there is no specific originator of this particular program. It is a program or ME of how to control or harness a three-dimensional environment with non-dimensional beings inside of it, okay? Because there are several different things that are taking place here all simultaneously, and when identifying those things, it becomes somewhat of a meditative mantra when removing yourself out of what I'll call the ten. Dr. Monroe was right about when he said, okay, now that you're in the bioneural hemisync field, you're ready to leave the ten. And I'll explain to you the mystery of the, the ten today also. I want to talk about very briefly also about this karma free knowledge because of the realization that many times our actions when we're doing certain things with individuals may entail a couple of uh, different not a couple but may entail karma if we're not watching what we're doing and I want to use a different word beside karma because a lot of people are starting to know oh, there's no such thing as karma and this is an illusion and blah 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 karma needs to be <laughs> interpreted as when you sin, you receive. Every action, there's a reaction on some level or another. And you actually should enjoy this system. It's not something to actually be afraid of. And the reason is because it equals your results. So instead of using the word karma today, we're going to use the word results. Okay? So result-free knowledge is basically when you, or actions, is when you're giving the person the ability to accomplish whatever it is that you're so eloquently or facetiously or whatever speaking of. And so what this means is, is that instead of giving it to them, like if I had these powers coming from my hands and then I put my hands and anointed and consecrated someone and gave them this power and ability, mm, that's sorcery, okay? So understand the difference because what happens is, is you're, you're transferring the individual, you're gone when actually utilizing your energy centers to actually send energy into a person and not considering. And we're not saying that this is, this is uh, forbidden. What we're saying is that th these, this is when you get into the things that there is real uh, balances and things that need to be taken place and taken account for by you. It's just like you're spending your currency, so you need to take balance of where you're spending currency. As a farmer, you're planting your seeds, and this seed planting thing is very tough. That's why I say, man, the ground wouldn't render forth for man. He would toil and till the sweat of his brow. They're talking about our ideas more so than just the farmer planting seeds. But if you want to take it into that level, you, the farmer who knows how much work he's got to do, it's not going to, woman or woman farmers also, they're not going to sit there and throw some seeds into some dirt that is hard and compact, and they know that the seeds are not going to grow up. They just as soon as save their seeds. Or they have to dig deep into that hard ground and crack it open and get some uh, soil moving and get down to different layers to get the minerals, okay? So these are things that make higher states of consciousness so simple because when focusing just on those things, you get these deep levels of introspection of what is exactly going on in your life, how you may be planting seeds on infertile soils, and thus, every time you, it's time for your harvest, which happens every full moon, is you eating this slop or this mess that you've put together, okay? Because, and this is a system that we really want to occur because when we're doing what we are balanced to do and supposed to be doing, then this just equals this continuous abundance and you're out of here in no time. There's a full maximization of your energy because you are, begin to be all-pervading magnetic, okay? So that's another thing I want to tell people about. There's karma-free knowledge that you can begin to deal with. This is an example of it, of how to apply exactly the, to individuals exactly what they need. They say it's better to teach a person how to fish 
than to actually catch the fish for them or something of this nature. Basically, it's better to teach a person how to feed themselves than to just keep feeding them. Because when you do that, you develop a certain kind of relationship and it becomes vampiric. So also remember what we're going to talk about later on today when we get into some of these religions, mainly one, you can imagine the level of vampiric activity, i.e. vampires, this is why they love the word across a lot, going on because of the method in which it's being used. Nothing to do with the doctrine, okay, because that's a whole other ballgame. But I want people to see very clearly with your micro-macro approach how you can just take short parts of what's being presented today. The message could be replayed a thousand times to grasp something different, just like last message. But you can keep getting into the message and actually extracting what you need that synchronous to the moment that you're dealing with. So as I've been explaining for the last, you know, who knows how long, <laughs> and that's the computation of the unbegotten, meaning that, that there's this space that we have a hard time entering, especially as more advanced beings, and it's called the unbegotten. And, and this is because even as advanced as you may get on the planet, it becomes very difficult to start calibrating and calculating where you actually came from. And then in your works, you'll start seeing that you actually came from nothing. And since everything comes from something, according to even the highest states of knowledge here on the planet, then this becomes a meltdown in the mind. And so what I do is like, because these are like walls in my mind, and that's how I take them as when I can't figure something out, I feel like it's a wall. So then I do the John Henry on the wall. I just start to chip away at it. And then I keep going with it. And every time I get some free space of thinking where I can say, OK, where was I at before? Oh, yeah, the unbegotten. Mm, and then I'll just keep <laughs> chipping away at that wall. So finally, it came to me in the deepest state because I was in a space of no science. And then all of a sudden, it was like, bam, that's why you can't uh, comprehend the unbegotten, because in the stage that you're in the unbegotten, you have no senses, no chakras, okay? And then what chakras are, are your actual attainments, or your jewels, or your worlds, or your marriages, your fusions that you've put together over a long period on a timeline, right? Creating this lattice work, this geometry, these different shapes of these realities that you're going through, and then when you're done, Boom, it goes right into your cosmic being as this chakra. And these become your senses. These become how you perceive and how you interact with each reality that you're going through based on really what you had already gotten into before. Okay? Now, very early in the game did the geometry and things started, meaning uh, actual unhindered being being encapsulated in some type of geometry. And we'll talk about that here in just a moment, but I just wanted to make it very clear that these days on the balance bridge, I'm not too keen on losing my chakras, and I'm not too keen on saying that I don't want to be in Zen, meaning that I'm actually in this simultaneous space of having all of my senses and it also in Zen, and that's called alpha beta, okay? I've gotten more of the scientific explanation of exactly what is occurring within the brain when it is able to perceive things that others don't actually see while also being very alert and awake in the reality. So again, alpha, beta. Why those in delta are actually sleep because that is the frequency. So those in the now delta or in the inverted pyramid or in the womb of their own consciousness are actually sleep. And this is why they can't actually perceive the reality because in their own, the brain doesn't even give off the signatures of one who would actually be perceiving the reality. And this is because they have to enter, learn how to enter into alpha stages and feed the brain in the alpha stages. And to give you a physical example of what the alpha stage is, is that before a golfer is, is about, right before the, um, the club, a professional golfer, the club touches the ball, right before it touches the ball, the brain spikes into an alpha stage because that is the moment where that golfer is having to determine exactly how to hit that ball. And we're talking about the professionals, okay? The professional buckyballers. That's the process, okay? So this is also, I'm glad I started talking about this process because I want to start to show you how to extract and to mine deep levels of knowledge from anything. This is, this, for this reason, you won't have to really go that far 
really mainly within yourself, to start extracting massive levels of knowledge. You don't even have to turn on the, the TV or, or turn on anything. You just turn your cell phone and you can start your extraction. But this is what I'm calling mining, mining your own mind. And the reason for this is because you do con con contain jewels within that many other forces are actually plundering right now. But they can never get deep into your holy of holies where the grand jewel itself is kept. But you have the ability to access that space in yourself. So what I want to do is I want to give you a system to where anywhere you go, anything you do, whatever's approaching you, you can see such deep knowledge in it that you remain in a stage of balance because you are aware and everything is, a tr is transparent to you. You're not actually confused, so that way you have to begin judgment, okay? Because confusion and ignorance brings about judgment because then you have to determine whether you should or you shouldn't. One who is not, one who is, who's not uh, um, unclear about such things does not... Excuse me, I'm thinking about two things at one time, but I'm thinking about maybe... OK, what maybe does is it's like mm, this floating point, right? It doesn't actually say yes or no. OK, so in this maybe state of frequency also, then this means you get a chance to pass right through the knowledge and the information and, and just consider the knowledge and information rather than making a judgment. And the judgment is more similar to if you're in lucid sleep and you try to lucid dream a little too hard, you wake up. If you're trying to get out of the body, especially during meditation, and you start to feel something, then you acknowledge that you felt something, you stop feeling something. And as I say on my Skype, that everything is there until you try to look at it. Because the moment that you do, you take these lasers, these beams, and then you start cutting all of this stuff up in the reality, right? So what everything is, is clear by when you close your eyes. <laughs> like it looks like that. And then even you, there's an advanced stage where you project lights and then you can create all sorts of different things even in your own mind. But as of now, that blackness, that void is still a good metaphor for what actually the stage of everything is. Okay? But then the moment you open your eyes and you become aware, then your calibration start, your system and your processing goes on. And it says, first, where am I at? First triangulation. It has to know where it is. And then it starts to process information from there. Oh, that's this person, that's this person. And then the reality constructs itself so fast that you don't even see it. And this is why it's completely malleable when you get into frequencies that you can see it. Okay? So just remember, chakras are your jewels. Some have jewels that are cracked. They have inclusions. Some different things are going on with them, but they're still jewels nonetheless. So in every tense, sometimes we take a jewel and we remove it. And then we put a perfected jewel in. And that was why it was power to know the perfection of these different uh, dimensions that we're actually in. Meaning that the perfection of the demented state of mind gives you a reflection of the exact creation. So even the world being here and the sun being there is a huge metaphor again within itself. Because this means that if the sun is over here, the only thing that could be here is the shadow. And this is why they say that the world doesn't give off its own light. It's not a sun, okay? But then the deeper level of this teaches that that, that is actually the illusion because the sun is really within. And then this starts to light you from within, i.e. the shining one, okay? So as we keep going, I'm now going to make my way to the board, but let me make sure. Yep, that's it. We got to how you extract, any, extract knowledge from anything, and so I'm about to show you because... I was on my own uh, little mission here. Let me move the camera around, get this stuff positioned where I need it to be. But I was on my own mission on finding <laughs> what certain symbols meant on my keyboard. And this was only because, and this was about four or five days ago, I was creating something for um, the resistance, obviously, and different things that I was putting together. And then there was a key command and I was pushing that key command, and it wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. And so I started thinking, well, maybe I'm pushing the wrong key command. Maybe I've actually uh, <laughs> misread that that's not the shift, that's not the shift symbol, okay? And so 
what happened was is that <laughs> once getting, I tried to Google really fast, you know, what are all the key commands for, for the Mac uh, as far as symbols are concerned. And then that's when it started. Immediately I was taken off on a course. <sighs> and it was like, hey, check out the command symbol real quick, though. Because just the other day you were talking about that if Apple, which of course is the pentagram, and this is because an apple inside has um, five seeds. When you cut it down the side, you'll see that there's five seeds. Because well, most plants, many plants are, are, are actually probably all plants have five base nature in them. But the apple in particular was always used as a meta, deeper metaphor because when you cut it down the center, it bears a pentagram right in the center, okay? It's like a sand dollar, right? So what I started looking into really briefly was this command symbol and, and who's supposed to be in command? Like why would they denote that this is the symbol of command? And if you could call it a rabbit hole, you could call it a rabbit hole, but that's, that's what happened. All of a sudden, this advanced level of information about what exactly is taking place in this reality, who's responsible for doing it, and also how to unwind the mind and unbind the mind from what it has done. And so that's today's message. And of course, you know, we're going to get through this today as much as possible. And then anything that we don't get through, obviously, we'll follow up here in a second. So let me go ahead and load a picture here because this is obviously your command symbol on an Apple keyboard. Okay? And this symbol in particular actually comes from Gotland. <laughs> it is a Viking symbol akin to a mark that as a traveler or fisherman <laughs> When you would see this, you would know that the Vikings had been there, okay? And this is the beginning of a deeper level of knowledge about knots. Because it turns out that if you take a straight line or a one, and then you make it three-dimensional, what you'll get to is you'll get to a tube. And I just want you to think about that in your mind, that if you take a straight line and then you made it three-dimensional, you would get a tube. And then that would begin the tube of time, okay? That what time really is, is it stretches out like a tube or a web all over this space we're calling the astral plane, okay? So... Right away, you can start thinking about, well, is this maybe why they talk about weaving? That there's this weaving that witches can do, as they say? Or that there's this deep metaphor within the knot or the Gordian knot? Okay? Okay, so this is your command symbol on the Apple keyboard called a looped square. <laughs> and... Right off, I mean, you could just tell the terminology just by itself. To loop a square would have to come after you circle uh, a square. After you square a circle, then you can loop the square. <laughs> and this is actually a process that I'm going to show you today has been occurring over thousands of years as the world is taken through different geometries and the beings that are living there, ge different geometries meaning different programs, different things going on, but all correlating to the Pacific geometry. And then when the person goes through that geometry, the next world, there will generally be two geometries present in the world on a main level. Like I showed you today, I showed you the five and the six or the hexagram and the pentagram. And it's obvious that that's the popular geometry in use today. Okay? Because they also contain the triangle and it contains pretty much every other angle and shape. Right? That's popular. But back in the day, before five, there was four, okay? And four, or Thor, even, and someone commented that, hey, this looks Celtic. It is definitely Celtic, because they talk about Celtic knots, okay? 
that there was the knowledge just like what we're dealing with today in regards to crossing through dimensions, uh, going through planes, those kind of things, okay? And for those who want to, uh, to get to this page, as you can see up there, it's Loop Square uh, in Wikipedia, okay? And so this is a step-by-step -step because it begins by, instead of reading this whole thing, first, I just want you to see that there is a mention here of Gotland, sweet Gotland, okay? And that you'll also see that it heavily connects to ancient things. And this is how I, uh, this is how I, I want to teach today because I, I can get really deep into this. And some of this stuff we will. But I also want to let people know you don't have to have all of this pre-knowledge to examine this kind of stuff and to come up with the truth in it, right? And let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger. For those who are looking for how you do things, make things bigger, it's actually Command Plus, okay? on your keyboard if you're using Mac, and I think on uh, PC it's uh, Command Plus also, all right? So you make your area bigger. So what happens is, is that you see several references that this has been going on for a long time, that this symbol has been found around different countries for a long time, but it mainly traces back to Gotland because it is the symbol used by the Vikings in order to map, mark or map areas that they've already been to so that when they send others that are affiliated with them to those territories that they can begin to follow a certain path that will lead them to certain things. And this is why I used to remark that the world is like a huge cloak and dagger. Once you understand how to read symbols, even at night at times, black lights show different symbols of, of of, of places pointed certain of things pointing to certain places using certain symbolism. So the world is engulfed in a secret. Okay? And this is another thing, and let me get the camera back on me, that I want people to realize, you know, remember we're just in the matrix today, so we're gonna drive out of here when, when it's all when it's all over, but there's some things that need to get transmitted. And one of those things is is that excuse me. Yeah, why don't I I'll just use that exactly. So <laughs> One of those things is, is that I, I want people to understand that this knowledge, okay, has been hidden and kept secret. That this stuff is so potent to what it's capable of doing for running kingdoms that if it's actually found out, then there's no more running any kingdom except for those who are still under the mind control in the program. Okay, so there is people who do know about this knowledge, but also know and, and work with this knowledge, but work with it in a tense of how it's going to benefit them. And this is one of the most important things that you have to understand with all this spiritual knowledge is that I'm not looking into this knowledge to figure out what kind of sign, what kind of symbol that I can put down and, and all this stuff to make some money and all this. Like everyone's looking for the word and all this kind of stuff. That's not what this is about. This is about getting untangled from the web. OK, because until then, you can't be a soul sovereign. All right. And that's why on the on the, uh, um, the plaque in the Bohemian Grove, what does it say? Uh, weave not thy webs here. OK, meaning don't do this on the people that are here. But see, they're very well aware of this web weaving. OK, so let's get back to how this works out from a logical level, because some people still may be like, OK, well, how does that all connect? All right, hold on real quick. Let me get to my notes here. And I want you to understand then that the loop square is similar to infinite recursion. Okay? It is very synonymous with that number 848 eight that we were talking about that's a part of this whole recycling process or looping. Okay? Because if someone takes a point in your timeline where you're supposed to graduate, and plugs it into a point in your timeline that you actually just start over again, then you keep starting over again, starting over again. And that's what the weavers of the web are capable of doing. Okay? And now, if you want to see the physical correspondence to this, it is now the internet. The internet can weave a web of truth that's really false. Meaning that it can lead a person from one link to another link to another link to another link. And then by that time, the person's confused because they don't have the eye. Meaning they don't actually have the ability to distinguish between truth and falsehood. Meaning being able to separate the chafe from the wheat. Meaning actually the ability to not judge. Okay, because only then does it render its secrets. Because what happens is for a great soul, everything's great. So everything that you see is great when you're balanced. So when something is not true, then it has to come true to you 
it may render falsehood to everyone else. To most people, it's just a symbol. <laughs> it doesn't even make any difference. But to those who know truth, say, oh, this is the end of the command. But I am aware of who is bringing the command. But it's so simple. If you're speaking English or English and your God is God by that name, good, then why is it so hard to understand that then that may be the individuals or kingdoms or whatever you want to call it that are involved in usurping your consciousness? OK, and now remember what I said earlier, I'm not talking about the citizens of the country, OK, because this is how they feel about the citizens of the country. We'll go here. One second. Okay. This is the symbols of the country. This is the crest. Okay. And then you see it gets into the sheep. You see it. There's even a story here because of the, the cross being there that they are still a Christian state and have always been a Christian country. Excuse me. Because this is the place where Christianity was founded. Okay? This is the origins of the concepts of God, G-O-D, and his son, Jesus. Okay? And some people say, but no, this has been going on for thousands of years. How do you know you weren't here? <laughs> All of the knowledge has been rewritten for you to think it was thousands of years ago that something went on that just happened Three or four hundred years ago is in certain cases. A thousand years ago, shoot. And when you're in no time and someone's weaving webs, they can plug you into another part of time for you to perceive that this stuff has been going on for a long time. But what is a long time to an immortal? <laughs> immortal doesn't work by time. So this just means that when time started, this is what was going on. Because before then, there was no time. So let's go to the next seen here because some people are like, oh my goodness, no, you just didn't say that Christianity came from Gotland. I know the Gotland people are like, wow, my heritage. <laughs> it's all twisted in people's mind right now, but we're going to untwist it because those knots, <laughs> difficult to deal with at times. So let's go here. There we go. We're back here. So realizing the loop square the infinite loop, and then we'll go here to the Stora Hammer Stones, okay? Because these stones actually give us the account of what later on by poetic means, excuse me, let me, uh, let me switch to that. Later on by poetic means, there we go, was made into the story of dying sons, saviors, devils, all of the drama that people love to hear, right? The story. They love the story, campfire tale, whether it's true or not. And in fact, the more animated that it gets, the better, okay? So on the store of Hammerstone, though, What's going on is the actual real crucifixion process. And what is being used to do that is a symbol that I really want you to hone in on, which is that triple triangle. It looks like a triple triangle, okay? But originally, this symbol was a triple knot known as a Borromean knot. And give me just a quick second because I'm going to get this stuff up, but just take a good look at that because the devil's there. <laughs> if you didn't see him or not. He's the one encouraging the whole thing. And again, all these are deeper metaphors, programs running, taken from other cultures and other places, and, but the same thing. There's even a river of, a river of Pharaoh, F-A-R-O in Gotland. Why, that same Pharaoh is P-H, the P-H Pharaoh, okay? Because what you'll start realizing is, is that as letters are being added to English, these are symbols that begin to deify themselves. That's why there was no J. Like there was no J before a certain time. Even when the name, they say the name Jehovah was introduced, impossible. There was no J. Jesus, there's another J there, but there was no J's. You see, so this is the more evidence that these books 
<laughs> I'm telling you, somebody told me a long time, oh, it's written by Shakespeare. I was like, man, no, it's serious. There's another level of knowledge that shows it. I can show you today, they're probably right. Because the poets probably write. W-R-I-T-E, okay? I'm going to show you today about right. Okay, this R-I-G-H-T, what's supposed to be right, even, meaning what's supposed to be good, opposed to odd, and how the game is played. Okay, so let me go here to this. So you see the store Hammerstone, and we're going to come back to some of this stuff. I'm just showing it to you now, so that way when I start talking about things, it doesn't get confusing at all. So here, these are the Borromean rings, okay? And these are the same thing as what you were seeing with the triangles. But the triangles came next. This is the geometry of what is this is this would be the symbol of the ME. OK. And the reason is, is because this is to, to make it very simple, the way of breaking an unbreakable knot. OK. This is symbolic too that if you cause something that is centrific 360 degrees to become elliptic, which is a wobble or oval, okay, then you could break the bond between this unbreakable, you know, this unbreakable trifold nature, okay? And then once doing that, you can then enter into, as you're seeing here, the consciousness. And so this is, this is really a, the same rendition, just a little bit um, or a lot more guttural, of when you see the Sumerian king putting the cone into the back of the head, or the Sumerian angel putting the cone into the back of the head of the king. Okay, so it's the same here in this rendition. There is the devil, as you would know it, the divided one, the one who divides. He's a smith, okay, because this is the art of the craft of actually making swords. But remember, this craft has been passed from man to another man to any willing man that will slay his brother. Then it starts to whisper in his mind and tell him, hey, you know there's more of an advanced weapon and you can gain an advantage over him. <laughs> really? Yes, we can show you how to build it. And then meanwhile, on the other side, they're telling them the same thing. <laughs> and I know this may sound like what's going on today because it is. So what I'm telling you is, is that this division is accomplished by the splitting of the being, splitting them up, make them fight each other, okay? And then what occurs then when there's fighting and division, because then at that point you're no longer me and I'm no longer you, so we're opposed to each other. So once this starts, then we divide and we become weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker, and as our shells are broken, as we're breaking our own shields against each other, right, then it allows us to become more and more infected by external, meaning non-harmonic forms of consciousness until we become routed, meaning that split in half, okay? And we become severed or divided from who we really are, okay? And then this then is the stage that most people find themselves in, even their brain is split open. They got two, two duplicates of their body sitting right here and they're in the vehicle still not understanding what's going on and what's happening and won't say anything about it. Everyone's afraid and in fear. No one wants to help. People are crabbing over the little bit they got. Some things are so much more important. But this is everything. No matter what happens, no matter how many worlds you go to, if there are worlds, you're going to be dealing with this. Because the Supreme HUD, okay? Supreme HUD for three-dimensional realities are triangles. OK, and the reason is because anything you can't figure out or you get lost on, you can triangulate. So let me just do this one time really briefly to let you understand the real difference between these planes. Soul, 
Spirits, physical. Okay? Anything somebody throws at you can be thrown into one of these categories. And it will catch all. Now let me show you why. In the physical planes, right, which are numerous, <laughs> do this real quick, okay? In the physical planes, all of the stuff that's actually matter and material, or what we perceive as matter and material, which are just materials moving below a certain wavelength, more so than the actual object itself. Any element in its stage of being trapped below the speed of light makes up those in the physical plane, okay? So this is why on the spirit plane, there's furniture. It's just made of different stuff. It's made of a higher grade than the same metals that exist here, okay? And in these spirit worlds are all of these beings that still are waiting on, or actually they'll never be waiting on because they already are, but they're souls, but they're souls encrusted with all of these different jewels. And it's just important that I explain these spaces because some people are anxious to get back here and not realizing what this actually is. This is non-identity. This, uh, this is not even clear face. This is beyond clear face. There's actually no perceptions of who you are in here. All of that goes on even in here. It's just time to man or woman or adept up to the whole thing. On the physical plane, you got a lesser knowledge of what is taking place in the spiritual plane. This is what makes the spiritual plane more dominant. And you can see why the spiritual plane would get up and kicking and functioning and have all the stuff going on because all the physical beings had to go someplace and they're here, right? And then waiting to get back. Where? Here for reincarnation, right? To take another vessel in the physical plane so that they can keep doing this, right? Until they figure out how to do this and then keep going. <laughs> you see, that would be the great arcana. Like, can you harness the energy of being a soul and even be able to comprehend what goes on after that? And all the deep books, they make you think that you can, but any real truthful being knows it takes the entire cell. It takes the entire planet to go into the full comprehension of what the soul is capable of doing and what it may be. All of us together, not one man going up there getting burnt out because that's what happens. So let's keep going. But remember, triangulation, the hug. But this triangulation is important. And it, because it sums it up, it gets people out of your face when they want to talk for a long time. You say, look, are you talking about things of spirits? Because that's spirituality. Are you talking about physical things? Because the soul has no identity. So let's stop playing around. Don't touch it. It is not a zero. Okay? Because I'm going to show you the codes right now of how they attempt to make the soul zero. Okay, or infinite zero, which comes from the uh, Arabic cipher, which gives you the word cipher or zephyrus, meaning west wind. Okay, here we go. So you know it's a scene of division. So let me go to very briefly because, see, the problem is with ego. His ego never fails to show you who's really involved. Because the person who starts getting involved with it, they say, shoot, then I got to leave my mark or my symbol on it. So when you want to check back, and some say, to exactly how all this occurred, you can really go to, and then also how deep some of this stuff really gets in some of these entities that these people are dealing with. You get to an amazing story. So here, really briefly, you'll see the Boromian rings. Okay, and let's go back to that because here we are. Okay. So to understand this again, because you'll, you'll read it and you may get it and you may not get it, but that's why you see Stora's hammer as you keep scrolling down here. You see it here, right? Okay. And then you see it, it's related to the Trinity. Okay, and this is why 
all of the doctrines that are put out by these poets for indoctrination are always Trinity-based doctrines because what they're doing is, is they're dividing the spirit or circle, per se, by three, okay? So this means, as we were talking about before, that, you know, some are in these matrices and they don't realize that these religions are going through numerical systems. So let me show you that in the deep knowledge. So you have one, three, five, seven, and nine, which are called odd, the oddballs. Then you get two, four, six, eight, and ten, who are known as the even, okay? So it's easy to see here because this is how this is called suggestive thinking or, or actually inception. This is when an idea is put into a being's mind and it's done secretly, okay? Because when they say even, even to the mind means good because the ones that are not even are odd. And in our reality, odd is known as strange, okay? So it's easier to say then that these are the odd numbers or bad numbers according to them and these are the good numbers right meaning this is what we don't want you to be and this is what we do want you to be why let me see how does that how's that appearing looks like everyone can see that why because two is in duality okay constantly <laughs> Four is only a door, Dallas, okay, a receiver. Six is in conflict, in passion, okay? And we're not saying which one is good or not, okay? We're talking about what these numbers do, <laughs> okay? So six is in conflict, okay? And through that conflict, something arises from it. But these two triangles are dual, dualities. Okay? Eight is con consumption. Okay? It is constantly consuming or eating or drinking or in some kind of process of, again, consumption. And then 10, okay, which we'll get to in a minute, uh, 10 or the 10 man, okay? Because this is a deep riddle, right? But I'm going to finish with. Understand, so you, under, this, with you understanding the, the odd numbers, okay? One, the reason why one was the symbol of unity on three-dimensional realities is because when the first people, when the cycles start over again, the first people go one. They don't go zero <laughs> because it, it doesn't have a, con it's no concept. It's nothing. It doesn't, it's like, see, it's when you're dealing with people who like to waste time that you get zeros okay why because what person is going to say zero one two three four five six seven eight <laughs> it's like hey man you're wasting voice it's just one two three four five six seven eight okay so what happens is is that this zero came later on and it's important to realize that because that's when there's a pole shift <laughs> because that is the simple binary as we see these are binary codes this is a simple binary switch of when it's time to switch you on to the other side of your brain. That's when zeros are introduced into the reality. So you can go to Wikipedia and you can find the origins of the zero as Zephyr or the West Wind. So this means the West Wind, those who bring about the Western state of consciousness, do cause pole shifts and shifts in realities in the ways that they occurred. So again, you see this in one, that unity, you see this in three, that unity. You see this in phi, which is nature's phi. So I won't even go out and go and draw the straight line pentagram. You see this as seven outside of time, can be divided into a zero. You see this as nine, fully perpetual. But this is odd. <laughs> okay, that's what they're really saying with the numerical code. Okay, and then obviously this gets into deep stories and deep programming. So let me finish off the 10. Walking like a tin man on the throne. Let me show you. 
Highway to the danger zone. <laughs> As I mentioned, that one, okay, when made three-dimensional, is actually a tube, okay? Right? And this is actually called, this tube of time is called a Bucky tube. Go research it, this Bucky tube, okay? Bucky tube is a, tu a carbic tube of time, all right? So what happens here is, is that if one is this tube then, because these are three-dimensional reality marks, no matter who was in here doing it first and chiseling it in first, three-dimensional reality marks, this means that one has zero in it. That is the secret to one. That's the secret to unity. Okay, because what unity is, is that you're just seeing it as a straight line. But when you look down unity to see all of what makes unity, then you get this tube. And then this tube is circular on its, you know, it's a womb, right? So this tube then is a circle. <laughs> so the secret with one is one contains a circle within it for those who can see it. But for those who cannot Walking like a tin man. <laughs> tin is the first introduction of one and zero as separate characters. Okay? This is the act of putting a very balanced stage of consciousness at war with itself. Like, it may take some shows for everyone to get to realizing what has been uncovered here, but... This is the first time, if you notice, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, even everyone is still together until walking like a gin man. <laughs> the tin is introduced, okay? Because then what this does is, is it, it makes several things happen. First of all, this is a whole, okay, to them. And the description of this whole is, is that when you throw something into it, it goes away. And so this is why people are throwing their trash away. This is why people are leaving old lifestyles behind, old chakras behind, and trying to start new ones, you know, jumping back into the womb again to come out, but still dealing with old problems, old things in the body and all sorts of stuff, not fessing up to it now. Who? The demon. Excuse me, the diamond. So people like to hear it like that. You see how they play with the words? If I tell you diamond, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Right? But if I tell you Damon right, which is Latin for demon, right, then it gets weird because we're still trying to figure out that carbon is 666. Six electrons, six protons, six neutrons. This is, I want you to see again that this knot tying <laughs> is quite known because it's called, and I want to pronounce this white, <laughs> Volknut, okay? And it just means a knot, okay? And each knot supposedly is a slain warrior, okay? And you can see kind of how that connects. I don't want to gander too far here. I would love to sit another week on this whole thing. But realistically, when you terminate a life in conflict, you become interlocked into that conflict. This same conflict and duality begins to manifest in different shapes, forms, and fashions, life after life. Oftentimes, anyone that you see that has some kind of opposed thought than you, opposed color, demeanor, culture, or whatever, when you're seeing only through your grid, then it makes you perceive that that is the one that you should be going to war with, into conflict with. And then meanwhile, that creature that's sitting up there, because he's right here, <laughs> that is encouraging this division, okay, is moving throughout the minds of all the individuals that are involved in the conflict, okay? Because that deludes them from seeing that they're actually going in conflict with one another. And all this stuff, you can, I'm leaving it so you can go back and you can study. But again, this gets into the triquetra and all of the Trinity-based religions. It gets into the use of this triangulation as what? 
Can you see it there? Let me go back down here. What are they saying here? If you think that it's just me and seven's on one, a mental bind. Okay? So this means that through this craft, which is basically a ship, a stage of consciousness that has formed itself in our atmosphere or in when we're in most fear, a craft, an alien, something foreign to us, shows up, breaches through customs, brings signs, symbols, marks, languages, all of those things, especially the poetry, especially the indoctrination or the doctrines, and then begin creating mental binds. Okay? And then when the mental binds begin, a person can basically go to sleep, i.e. die, and then reincarnate back into a very common symbol of the reality that they just left from, mainly pentagons, hexagons, because these stars, okay, they're stars, but they're really energetic bodies, okay? They are like a blazing fire on the astral plane, and that same blazing fire, which twinkles in different colors and shapes and is like a glowing stone, it attracts spirits who are generally in their secular sense, insect, meaning actually inside but secular, attracted to it. Because think about what it's saying with the insect, okay? Inside and secular means an individual that his inside divided, okay? So the metaphor with the in insects is that insects' lifespans, okay, because of their secularness, but still tied in the hives, are more rapid, okay? So what you get then, and I have, I have charts of this, so we'll go next week and we'll start introducing some of those charts, is you get these different worlds, all still, and these are donuts intertwined with each other and weaved together, different portals and back doors and spaces going into other spaces, but then many of the life forms being going in and out so fast, Okay, and this is the difference in genus. Okay, so these li different life forms are on these orbits. So the ones on the great grander orbits, as they call them, i.e., the angle or the angels, right? They're just on another part of these spiritual, not soul, but spiritual realities that are moving slower than our actual physical reality. So let us get into that. screens on let's get into the angels because that's on the card we're going to come back here to bromian rings because it actually connects to the bromian uh i'm probably saying it wrong Bor boromian illuminati the real ones okay so what we're dealing with here is the angle always secrets man there's secrets today I'm the man of secrets. I reveal secrets. That's my job. Okay. Oops, I spelled the same thing. I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. I got something else for you, though. Hold on real quick for me. Man. Okay. Anyway, there was something that I was remembering, and I'll get to it in a moment. But what this is about is the first language that was developed under this Vulgate, okay? Vol, okay? V equals five, all right? So the Vulgate it consisted of Spanish, and the reason is because what are they telling you that's happened, at least from, from your accounts in the history books, about who came over and started ruling the Americas, Okay? And so the Americas, even before they're talking about Christopher Columbus, who was being paid by, at that point, the British, were already taken over and populated by the Vikings, all the way through Canada, etc. There's a lot of documentation of that, even some of their coins and things, and I may need to write bigger here, but even some of their coins and things have been found in what we're calling the Americas today. 
In addition to that, I explained to you the people that you're calling Indians or people who migrated from the Indus Valley and also Nubia and those areas up into the northern hemisphere and were looking for the north or to go further north. So when you're dealing with, with the language then of English, that's what the secret was. Man, it took a minute because they were trying to pull the secret now or I'm doing it. Who knows? There's the secret. English is elven, okay? This is picked, right? And this is where you get the, le the, the, the pixies, right? And the elves, right? Okay? I think that's right. Because the elven, or even this term el, okay, all this stuff, like, well, no, that's a Jewish term, it's a Hebrew term, it's a... Man, if you ain't read the codes yet and understand who the languages have been passed in the hands of and who, you know, what these languages are all about, then, man, you need to start at episode one. But realistically, this, these languages are systems of control. So if you're looking for the one that is the most powerful and all of that, the, that is not a language at all. It's an intonation, okay? So what's going on with English or English is, is that this is English is elven, and you'll know it when you play it backwards, okay? And it's because that what's backwards is forward in this reality, unfortunately. And this is hidden within the metaphor of the guy that's riding on his donkey backwards, okay? And this is through the realization that what goes on in these physical planes is backwards to what really goes on in the, the expanded, connected, harmonic planes. Why? Because surely war is not a part of the expanded plane, okay? So war is backwards. So on planets where war exists, then the brains are moving backwards as the English does. As we said, it moves from a certain direction to another direction. Everything is turned, that is turned backwards and down, and that's the whole lat part of it. As they say, the Latin, that's the, the latitude in it, okay? So what happens is, is that this English or English, it's, you can't tell what it is when you pronounce it this way, but then when you play it back reverse on a tape recorder, then you hear what you're, re what you're really saying and what you've really been up to, especially if you read tones, vibrations, and frequencies very well. You will also notice that it bears very uh, deep connection to some kind of visio-gothic or Germanic type tongue, what you're hearing, and it's because it is. But that's why you only have half of it, meaning half of the truth of the angle, 26. 26 times 2 equals 52. 52 weeks in this cycle. This cycle is of 365. This 5 is the 5 gods that are added to 360, right? To throw them off, right? Which gives us this symbol. Never meaning no harm. It's like a pyramid from the top. Robbing the system like a good modern day Robin Hood. OK, because these people, they don't play around with their symbol. They're always putting the symbol everywhere. It's X. OK. Walking like the Tin Man. OK. The X is the cross. OK. Or the sword, right? It's a sword, right? Some type of sword or shipmast, right? These are fishermen. So every symbol that they can lock into, that they say represent them, they use it. Let me show you. That's command. Let me see here. I believe it's like this. Yeah, something like that. I'll put it up for you. Pisces. Oh, yeah, there it is. I think it's like this. Okay? And this is that same... You see what I mean? And that's what we're dealing with here.